and welcome to episode 19 of Doki Doki Literature Club. Plus, I bring Stabity the Stabby Stabby that ever Stabbitied, and last we left off, we had asked Yuri to come over for the weekend. So, let's go ahead and do that. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert, and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. Ooh la la! She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But, putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club since she left club early the other day. Don't worry, Yuri is getting way overexcited about the upcoming visit. That's right, Enwise, she sure is. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. Yes, lust is one of Yuri's words, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Actually, you know, why am I reading this? We've already gone through all this so many times. We go on skip and we wait until we get new things. We talk to Sayori, we get all of her conversations, we find out about her depression, yada yada. It's already the third time through. No need to listen to all of it once again. Now we're at the new section at last. Now we start talking about Yuri. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Uh, Yuri? Um, thank goodness. Uh, you're a little early. I'm sorry, I uh, wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for me a long time? Just a little bit of hanging out with Sayori. Anwise, you are a horrible human being. <laughs> no. I just got here, but I started to get real nervous when nobody answered the door. You could always have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. And when it says, I know you still like me, I do still like you. You are a cool guy. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you've brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. Um, sure, it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, uh, so... Uh... That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, no, uh, I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you're here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. And that is another waifu point for Yuri. <laughs> As I'm sure you all know the old joke, in order for a man to be happy, he needs a woman that cooks, cleans, is great in bed, and for the three of them to never meet. I'm sure Yuri has been fantasizing about you forcefully ravishing her now that you're both alone. Because girl got a searing libido. Yeah. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, uh, that 
would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, which, in, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? And Rice, I mean, I think they made it pretty clear she's a massive perv beneath the surface. Just too timid to act on it. Yep. Um, yes, um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although, many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great! It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Aromatherapy candles do indeed literally enhance atmosphere. Correct. Ah, uh, Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. It... Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see, uh... Anwise, relieved, kind of happy, and other things. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to uh, a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful! Yuri, just getting ready to wear a lot of black fishnets and black lipsticks, am I right? Raven Dark Gloomwing. Ugh. <laughs> what kind of mood is that one for? Love making, I'm sure. This is, a uh, jasmine essential oil. It smells a little, uh, sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and 
helps you feel them flow through your body. I suppose you'd want to keep her out of Italy then. Uh, help me with the connection. Oh, because she's goth. And we want to keep the goths out of Italy. You feel warmer. And your heart pounds more heavily. <laughs> I got it in time. Yes. We don't want goths in Rome. Don't you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? Feel the emotions flow within you. It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. Sorry, what's the Obi-Wan reference, Enwais? What are those for? Well, uh, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Oh, feel the emotions flow within you, Obi-Wan. Gotcha. Yeah, I have it over here. We uh, won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Yeah, basically quoting Star Wars. Let the emotions flow through you. Oh, yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorways of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eyes of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you're, you'd you be so good at this, Yuri. Uh, is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense. As you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me? Or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Yeah, typical introvert. One-on-one -on -one conversations work better than group conversations. Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, stabity. You can tote... <laughs> oh... Uh, Enweiss just made a reference to Corpse Party, where they create a friendship ritual that sends you to hell. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels the long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then, she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Her whole setup with this atmospheric stuff. Yes, yes. Definitely reminiscent of Corpse Party Ritual. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, uh, well, uh... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're uh, going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. I think she's trying to say that knives are kind of into her. Yeah, Yuri doesn't... 
Yuri doesn't want to share her hidden hobby, but she's willing to share the very edge of it. <laughs> They're just... so pretty. I... I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Oh, uh, what am I saying? Please, don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. I think Stab might have been more weirded out if he got the full story. I mean... I already know the full story, but in-game me would be very weirded out if, if he found out the full story. Yuri caref carefully hands me the knife, with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extraordinarily solid, and extremely solid. Where did you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Stabity! I gotta be careful, we might get a hepatitis from her. Yeah, in game character, not real world you. I got Shanweiss. Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. Uh, it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh... She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, ah! Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. Okay, now she's officially gone, uh, crazy. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh. <laughs> she knows it can cut through skin so well. She does. She's a vampire. She is. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Uh... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri? Fine, Anwise, I'll do it. One! One vampire! Ah, ah, ah! Yuri... That's... The most embarrassing thing I've ever done. H how could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Stabity! Did, did you really just do that? N now we're even. Dot, dot, dot. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. 
<laughs> or, you know, I can finally do, uh, read Anuise's next line. Count Kristoff from the Spirit Engine 2. Two! Two vampires! Ah ha ha! I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, there would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Stabity. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri? Calling me weird? You got the guts? You got the guts to call me weird? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, you crazy woman? You calling me weird? You're the weird one. I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. Jasmine Oil is made from a princess who owns a tiger, right? <laughs> yes, they cold press her and get her oil. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great! Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolored paint tablets. We'll uh, need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind uh, fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be uh, too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back to my room. Uh, Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so uh, let's mix the paint. Yeah, she was clearly cutting herself. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. I have to say, the character designs are cute, but the red rimming for the uh, eye corners just looks mildly disturbing when I look closely. Yeah. That red there does look disturbing, anyways. I agree. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll... Write an inspirational quote across the banner. Uh, what's intentional, Anne Weiss? The uh, red corners making her eyes look weird? We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the class. Ah! Neat! What are you going to write? Well, uh, it will be... More fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. 
The disturbing effect for the character designs with how they do eyes. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, their eyes are, like, really interesting. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, oh, um, sorry if this it feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, um, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. It's a mystery why Yuri always wears long sleeves. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure, a mystery. Even when it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. Hey, games, right here, I'm sharing it with you guys on stream and on VOD. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. And Anwai says she needs to stay in and do crazy things to have fun. Yes. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah. S sorry Yuri reels back, and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? <laughs> bunk. Yep, there was a bunk. N no, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel. Then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, even without the uh, red rims, I mean, the eyes are just so deep, so multi-layered. It's like she's got an insect instead of pupils. <laughs> Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry, uh, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait... Eh? Just... for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Now well, turns out it's an aphrodisiac. Oops. Yuri's gentle fingers, wrapped around my wrist, send a tingling sensation through my arms. And suddenly, 
Her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh... Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. It could be an it could be anemia. That would make sense. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brushes again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following, continue following Yuri's example. And because in-game Stabby is a dork, he doesn't notice what Yuri wanted to happen there. That is correct. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with the white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it in the morning. <laughs> and why I hear Monica watching us. Yes, so supposedly whenever you hear a piano, that means Monica's watching. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew! <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, oh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am, too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making uh, dinner soon. Stab, what if you reopen Sayori in a project? Uh, if you roped Sayori into a project. Bad and wise. Bad and wise. Ah. So you don't have any more time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well, dot dot dot. Yuri thinks to herself. Hey, uh... Sakalim Zia, welcome. Zoyishi World, welcome. Two guys joined at the same time. Uh, Sakalim Zia. Uh, your chats won't be showing up since you're on Rumble, but I'm glad you're showing up on Rumble. Zoyishi, welcome on YouTube. Yuri thinks to herself. I... I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look, look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. Alas, this date with Yuri was a bust. Uh, NYC, you're uh, incorrigible. Or however that's supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> hey, Zoishi, thank you. Thank you for the uh, follow. Much appreciated. Or the subscription, that's on YouTube. 
But that doesn't mean that this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I was glad to help. I was glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will... Admirable is the pronunciation. <laughs> Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want. You can come over or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles, bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Stabity. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I... I'm kind of like that about you. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S -s Sayori? Eh? Uh, Kai Stabity? Sayori? Just now, we weren't. <laughs> It's okay, Stabity. I just stopped by to say hi. <coughs> uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, really? That's too bad. Uh, I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Sayori beams. Y yeah, so... Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Retsnam is still waiting for the not-for-sensitive viewers content. <laughs> well, we're getting very close to that, Retsnam. You just need to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, Sayori will be sure to show up. Yes, yes. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori. And now we crush her heart. <laughs> I thought you said... I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well... Uh... I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, uh, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy, even as she's crying that you've made such good friends that's all that matters to me tears start to fall down Sayori's face that's all that matters to me why am I feeling this way stabity for certain values of really happy yeah. I'm supposed to be happy for you why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half it hurts so much everything hurts so much this would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Stabity. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Dot, dot, dot... Because an evil witch is manipula manipulating you. That might have something to do with how much it hurts. Hey, Nerissa, welcome to the stream. 
glad to have you. You're just in time for uh, the end of Act 1, which will be coming up very shortly. Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. Stabbed, he's just about the end of his rope. Bad and wise. Bad and wise. <laughs> it's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared. Stabity. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Stabity. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I'll, I'll always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. And it's not the D. You'll always be... Sayori. You'll always be my dearest friend. Yep, just gonna stick the knife right in there. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they always like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back the way they were. I I see. Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? Oh, that's why they call me Stabity. I should write a poem about this. Sayori. It, it's okay. This is just my punishment. Remember? I don't know. Ask Yuri. <laughs> For being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. Is this what it feels like to be stabbed in the chest? Yes, I got you anyways. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Stabity. I, I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sayuri's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. <laughs> Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. Ah, that was supposed to be a scream, not a cry. Uh, yeah, it's almost 11. I'm not going to scream. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Mm, dot, dot, dot. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! Dot, dot, dot. I'm left helplessly standing in the front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. At least it's not Ichthaloth dialogue. Yes. Also from the Spirit Engine too. 
The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path. That's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. I actually don't remember how you voiced it, Anwise. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I'll have to rewatch it. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend, and I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Ah, Monday. It's the day of the festival. Basically, psychotic alien screaming. Okay. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me to not not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Sayori has made a grave mistake. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Stabity, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like, and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that. But I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Stabity. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Monica, what you talking about? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. Also, Monica's eyes are red-rimmed. They are. They are. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Wow, yeah, being really self-important there. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. All the girls' eyes have red lining. Gotcha. Eh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but... For some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing it. Hey, uh, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flip to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. She is only one squid, yes. It's one that I haven't read before. Percent. 
Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head, get out of my head. 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 Get out of my head get out of my head get out of my head get out of get out of my head get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me get out of my head before I show you how much I love you get out of my head before I finish writing this poem but a poem is never actually finished it just stops moving Ah, uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Stabity? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori. So, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself, Monica calls out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that... Things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Sayo. Ah! Jump scare. Not at all for sensitive viewers. Line 307, see traceback.txt for details. Dot dot dot. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. Check traceback? Sure, I'll check traceback. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. Do it now? Fine. I'll do it now. Save. Main menu. Yes. That's already glitched out. She's already glitched out. Let's exit and go take a look at traceback.txt. Files. Traceback.txt. What shall you... No. That's, uh... That's from, uh, a month ago. Quantum server execution stack trace. Yeah, that's a uh, different one. It has to be after the act ends. <laughs> Red Snom. About time. I've been wanting that bitch dead for a uh, for a while. Well, I'm glad you're happy, Red Snom. Yeah, that's old. Yeah, we got some mail. We got some pictures. Not going to peek at them. Got to finish the act first. 
yes, we know, game. We know. File error. Characters Sayori.char. The file is missing or corrupt. <laughs> Happy thoughts.ping. Save file is corrupt. Starting a new game. Not what I wanted. But that's okay. Glitch, 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 glitch. But yeah. We lost all of our saves. And let's exit uh, once again. Go to files. Happy thoughts dot PNG. Yeah, definitely uh, not what we're supposed to see here. <laughs> or I guess it's Hexby Thxots. Attributions? Yeah, we don't need anything attributions. All right, back to the game. And let's finish up, uh, let's finish up Act 1. Alright, let's load, and let's continue. Breakfast and That girl is Ajoyine Yuya, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but started getting around school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But yeah, we've already read this two times already. So, skip. Let's just continue. We got all the problems with everything getting broken. Glitches, glitches. More glitches. Monica continuing to glitch out. We really don't need to go over this. We've already done this. You can check out the uh, previous episodes of the LP. This is all stuff we've gone. Ooh, you've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. Oh, no, we are in Act 2 now. I'm sorry, I messed that up a bit. Can you hear me? <laughs> well, that was something. But yes, let's go ahead and save. And let's uh, get back out. That's as far as we're going to go here. Uh, I didn't expect to uh, go through the start of Act 2, but that is A-OK. -okay. Let's take a peek. We got some mail. Ria Vorte, side stories. Thank you to everyone who worked so hard on the controlled simulation. I can't imagine how tedious it must have been to delicately hide Monica's elevated permissions from her without disrupting our connection to the VM. Just to clarify, all the recordings labeled side stories are part of the control simulation, right? I'm noticing some details of the characters' lives here and there that differ a little bit from those in VM1, even trivial ones. Is it part of the butterfly effect from some of Monica's more fundamental changes? Or is it a result of her just messing around with the other characters in VM1 as her own experiment, or for fun? So if I'm keeping track, we have what, like, five different universes in total, with three or four of them created and then destroyed by Monica, of course? It's funny, because I keep wanting to speculate on which one is the real universe, but in reality, they all are. As real as ours is, anyway. Metaverse Enterprise Solutions, Rea Vorte, System Administrator. Hmm, interesting. Okay, and how about the pictures? What did we grab? Here we go, yes. This is definitely our uh, thumbnail for this episode. Choose to help Yuri for festival preparations. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, we got all of that section of CGs. We got about half of them. A little more. Ooh, and this is a new secret poem. Can you hear me? So, cool. We've gotten six of the uh, secret poems, plus a seventh one that's not visible. Here, a background. Our room. Good. Anything else? Nope. That is that. So that is it for uh, episode 19. If you're on the stream, stick around because I'm going to be recording episode 20 immediately after this. Whereas if you're on uh, YouTube, Rumble, or Odyssey watching the uh, VOD, then uh, thank you. Please like, follow, subscribe, share, all that stuff, and check out the uh, referral links in the description. 
to help support me. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye now.